The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give them life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all life. And drop it six feet if they kick it trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in, that's on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rude. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered. Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it. Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five. Before you hit a talk, bob your head side to side. This One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning. It's Rich, and I'm here with James. It's time to listen to One Nation. You got to the power of the Arabic. This is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it that counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Bang. Welcome to the February 24th edition of One Nation Radio. I am your host, Rich Ladder, of course, here with my co-host, James Boy. James, what's going on, man? Not too much. Um, just happy to know that Oscar is alive and safe. That's all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I forgot about that, you know. Um, yeah, man. So uh, another week here on One Nation Radio on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Thank you guys for always tuning in and rocking with us here and everything like that. And uh, we were just going down this long rabbit hole about talking about the devolution of rap production uh throughout this decade essentially where where we started and where and i don't say that pejoratively it, it, it's just hey, like okay. uh you know how we went from lex luger which is like just this epic shit right just and then now um i was listening to the the gonna drip or drown uh three or dripper drown uh-huh. two and just seeing how how sparse some of the stuff was so it's just like you know different things like that yeah and i mean it ain't it wasn't just luger either like it was like you know john little beats and um t minus and you know a few other people that were just like very prominent as far as like helping guys get off the ground in that early 2000 early teens or whatever else and now there's like T minus has retired and came back for middle child. Like, you know, it's kind of <laughs> weird. And he, and he did Kevin's heart on the J Cole album. So, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Another one who needs to mention on that is, uh, your boy, um, cardiac. Right. Yeah. He's, 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 he's in that Where is he? Too, like beat bully. And yeah. Yeah. Just, just making, making hard shit, but it's just still hard. It's just like different now, yeah. but scoop Deville. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bunch of folks. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man, uh, make sure everyone here, if you're checking this show out, make sure you guys are rating and reviewing all of our shows here on iTunes, Podbean, wherever you listen to us. Also, tell your friends about the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Make sure you guys check out our friends at powerslam.tv. The link will be in the annotation if I can actually remember to do it. Um, <laughs> so I've been, I've been putting this thing without the annotation, but y'all know what it is. Uh, if, if you scroll down the feed, it'll be on someone's. If you guys are fans of independent wrestling, which many of you are, uh, they have over 4,000 thousand hours of footage from all around the world use the code social suplex to get your free month's trial uh make sure you visit us over on pro wrestling tees pro wrestling tees.com slash social suplex shout out to dan coffin for ordering a one nation radio shirt um i also mine should be coming shortly uh and everyone else has shirts up there as well they got the keeping it strong side we got the social suplex podcast network got the ricky and clive wrestling show one so uh, i can't wait for the uh the custom ricky t-shirts oh man <laughs> y'all picking favorites already that's what y'all doing uh, i i feel like ricky might have have some good um uh inside jokes that he'll put on a t-shirt okay like i remember i had mentioned in um in, in one of the group threads that i was going to get a, a keep it a strong style shirt 
Oh I my god. Put, I was gonna put on the back of it like either you know team either team Jeremy or or uh or Juris Nation or whatever else. <laughs> and like I, I noticed that you laughed at it, Jeremy laughed at it. Josh ain't saying a word. <laughs> Josh, Josh, I don't take that shit personally. So I, I was just playing. I, I, you know, I just I don't want no smoke with nobody. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um. <laughs> yeah. Make sure also you guys you check know, out. You know, Josh will pull guard, so I don't want no smoke with that man. <laughs> you know, Josh watched the, the fake and the real fights, so. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys also visit the Patreon page, patreon.com slash One Nation Radio. We're four episodes deep into the road to 173-0. and 0. James, I recently, the last episode, we talked about Brad Armstrong. We talked about Ming, and we talk, had Yuji Nagata on there. So it was it was really interesting there. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, head over to our $5 tier. We've also got um, our Sidelined episode for uh, Elimination Chamber. That will be the exclusive home of Sidelined. Uh, that would usually add like you know another 10 to 20 minutes onto the normal show. Uh, and make sure you guys check out the uh rest of the shows here on the on excuse me on <laughs> the social suplex podcast network of course one nation radio here on sundays keeping it strong style all things elite you will make a luke wrestling podcast grown men watch this shit and the ricky and clyde wrestling show and coming in march james's new show nxt then now and forever um the show last week i guess we had some problems with the audio where it didn't record the last like five minutes and it, it only uploaded you know th- there was a whole nother part of the conversation so i believe the audio cut off at like 119 but it was like 130 and that was where james was actually explaining the concept of the show so <laughs> james if you want to tell everyone about the uh nxt then now and forever uh this would probably be a good time yeah um we're coming up on the five-year anniversary of or actually to, i think today or this weekend is actually five-year anniversary of wwe network being launched and oh, um you know, almost immediately after that, they go into showcasing off NXT in a big way with, you know, the very first ever what we call now a takeover. It was at that time, it was a special event or whatever the hell they call it. It was, um, a rival. It was called a rival. Yeah. Um, and, you know, on that match is ladder match and main event between um, Adrian Neville. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Bo Dallas for the NXT uh for the NXT title. Um, you also had Paige versus Emma for the uh, NXT women's title. Um, and also along the way, you have a, a great match and a part of a you know a set of matches between um, Cesaro, who was coming down, uh, who's coming down from, who's already on the main roster and came down to continue to do this feud with Sami Zayn, who turned into one of the um, cornerstone pieces in the five year history of NXT. Um, and I, I thought about it, and I, I thought about how much I really enjoyed listening to Observer um, uh, F4W's. Um, uh, Brian, if any retro, uh, and they you know they go back and, and rewatch Sm- uh, Raw and uh, and Nitro from 19 years ago. So I figured coming up with a five year anniversary would be a perfect time to start a retro show for NXT and kind of track the and do re- uh, do a review show for five years ago NXT and also to uh, the current product uh, every week and um, kind of look at where some of the acts were five years ago in development so where they are now and kind of talk about like what they were doing on the show then how they've kind of gotten better how things kind of stagnated or and also compared to what they're also doing the main roster and talk as well so it's kind of you know not nsc such as nsc for me is such, it has a whole such place in my heart because i don't know if i'm even still watching wwe product without well nxt every week to try to say this and i don't and uh that's not i can smack down because smack down is good most weeks but like raw is such a chore that you know, uh, that I kind of like as the week goes. Like Monday is like the worst after Mondays, and then Tuesdays it's a, it's a better feeling. And Wednesday I'm like, man, I can't wait till next week. And then I'm like, you dummy. <laughs> and, then, and then as soon as Monday comes, I'm like, oh, what are, what am I what am I thinking? But yeah, like I just I uh, just want to show some appreciation and um, talk about you know some of the positive things that WWE does put on because honestly, everything they put on the network, it, like the stuff they do on the network is great compared to the by and large, you know, Raw and sometimes SmackDown. So um, I, I, I kind of want to point out the things that I think, uh, the things that I'm positive about to kind of keep my sanity and kind of get, get a chance to blurt it out because, you know, we do this show weekly. Um, and, you know, NXT will fall, a lot of times falls through the, the cracks or whatever else compared to, like, you know, when I'm blowing y'all up while watching NXT at, at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock at night 
on Wednesday talking about how awesome stuff is. Like, oh my God, Ky- Kyrie Sane just gave the pirate hat to Izzy. This is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so, or like, oh my God, like, uh, Keith Lee just knocked, <laughs> just knocked out Cash Zone Cold. And now you got, you know, the Street Profits out there mocking him and it's hilarious. Like, so yeah. I kind of want to talk about, you know, uh, that. So, you know, that's what we'll be doing on um, NXT Then Now Forever. And I'll have a co a, a, a rotation of uh, co hosts coming in and out. Through, so, I'm, I'm, I think that uh, I think there might be somebody, uh, a few people that might want to do it. I don't know. We'll see. So, just for the record, I'm not banned from the show, right? Uh, I didn't think you were. <laughs> what, 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 you I know, don't even know what you're talking about. No, I, I, I don't want them to think we're running this uh, elaborate breakup angle. So, oh god. You know. <laughs> I'll still be on the show or whatever. Like, you know, so you're, you, is, is this out? Is this outcast? Like, and I heard voices oh wrestling, God. like making the same, same show. You know, is, is this the love below, nigga? Like, is this what you doing? <laughs> I can tell you this right now. Uh, if, I, if, I, if this makes me down to 3,000 doing weird shit by doing NXT, then like, I can tell you right now, like, they asked me to do the Super Bowl halftime show. I'm damn well doing it. <laughs> I'm not turning it down. So, so yeah, like, uh, but no, nah, like, it's just, uh, I, I mean, unless you, unless you got something to tell the people, like, I, I thought we I thought we were good. Yeah, no, nah, we, we we good. Yeah, so check this out uh, in the messages. And, yeah, this man, Kirby, has bought the WWE 2K19 game and sent it to the group thread. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, who's trying to get this work and i was like i actually don't own it because i've gone on record and, and talked about like how much this game uh it has has just been just a retread over the years and i was like i'm just not buying it this year as right. soon as kirby was like uh who trying to get this work i was like i'll go get it like just, <laughs> just, just, just to fight him like <laughs> Five minutes, half more of my money. Yes. God damn. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, man. So we got a lot to talk about uh, this week and all that. So, uh, James, when was that show? Uh, when was the first episode dropping? Oh, um, March first. March first. Friday. Friday. All right. So, um, the biggest story in WWE, probably wrestling world, uh, this week. Roman Reigns will be returning to Monday Night Raw to give some type of speech on his health status. Um, and they announced it, what was that, Wednesday, maybe? Wednesday or Thursday, yeah. Wednesday or Thursday, so uh, Stan yeah, Twitter so- freaked out. And, uh, you know, the the Roman Empire uh, had a great, grand old time on, on the uh, internet. I was very happy uh, to see, you know, him back. And hopefully this he's beat this shit and... Uh, he can come back to WWE. Like, it, I was um, like scrolling through the timeline. Vince McMahon sent the tweet out. Essentially, he's going to be um, <clears throat> having you know the the speech. They talked about him going to Good Morning America the following morning. So uh, it seems like it's good news on deck. I mean, yeah. Like, you know how how fu- I mean. Remember the decision, and people were like, "He's not going to break up with Cleveland on like on national television in front of like th- millions of people, right?" It's like Roman Reigns is going to tell us he's going to fucking die, or like <laughs> you know, like, he's not going to he's gonna, like come out here and tell us like in two in a two part special like how he's going to die on us. I know, like I, I seriously doubt. At least I hope not. Jesus, but yeah, man, I, I I hope that he's healthy, and like I don't care about anything else, like. Hopefully he's healthy, and then like you know whatever else after that is whatever else after that we can go from there after. Now, do we have to talk about? Of course, all, all the, the stuff. The, re- okay. the return of the trash discourse all around, <laughs> all around on Twitter. Uh, I've I've largely uh, I, I think I sent out one tweet, uh, all caps Roman back and left it alone but uh many others have not followed my lead uh because we a we don't know what's happening (laughs) actually with with him um and b you know i i am a person that likes to like be in front of things but literally there's nothing to be in front of because we haven't actually heard from this dude or got updates about anything except he did a movie um you know during this time and he was on nickelodeon or something like that besides (laughs) that you know, there's been a lot of like, you know, just everything out there. Yeah. Uh, Rich, I want to remind you of a conversation me and you had. You may have two, two, one or two conversations regarding this topic. And I remember saying to you that 
if and when Roman comes back, this is like a, like the week that it, they, they announced us that he's you know he's going to go you know fight for his life. Yeah, I remember saying to you like, I you know I'm already I, it hasn't even happened yet, but I am already tired of whenever he eventually does, or if he if and when he does come back, the people that are going to come out the woodwork to talk about how. X, Y, and Z was a work. It was fake, and this, that, and the third. And then the people that you know, and then the people have to do that. You know, that are in the right have to go immediately, like shout out how they're right and how these people are fucking, you know, the scum of the earth. And I'm, and sure enough, it's already happened. Like the second I heard that he's coming back, I was like, oh no. And sure enough, it, it happened everywhere. And people, where people are already talking about how whether or not you know people think this shit is a work and have to discuss how people online are talking about how it's a work and. There is, and, you dunking know, on people like, that dude, that like, ain't even there like it's just like, like it's just doing it for, yeah. for all the likes all the all the everything yeah. and, and, and that's like from from every angle like it's like yeah. so then like you have those and so then like that sets off the people that are you know um uh, the the pro the pro roman people and the you know the the wwe apologists and then that that lets them to where like anything that even approaches or not, not even things that approach anything that's like even uh any bit of like questioning you know the the method or how they decide to come about it is immediately getting you know getting jumped on so that's where you get the Melser thing where Melser speculates about like or Melser is talk, thinking out loud about like hey man like it's great that he's back he absolutely sat on the front end and I may have he may have sat on the back end like it's great that he's that he appears to be healthy and back. And then he starts about like, you know, like if this was any other thing aside from this carny shit, yep. <laughs> um, they would get people would look at him like, and hey then like, why are you, why are you trying to use him for ratings or whatever else? Like, can't you just tell people like where he stands or whatever else and go from there? Like, why does everything have, everything have to be a fucking angle or, or something try to boost the ratings? So then like because there's such a uh, there's such a you know game of telephone going on between the people that don't listen that don't that don't want anything to do with any of the you know leaking of of results and plans all that shit don't want that people that don't want to be the quote unquote smart fan like when that shit gets back to them anyway they're just like it's always a game of telephone where like that's not exactly what he said but this or well, fuck him. they didn't actually or they didn't report this it was speculation so therefore and then it gets back to them and they have to be like what is what, but they don't know because they want to stay away from that shit, but it still finds them anyway. So then they have to be, so so, they, so that shit gets to them and it wasn't supposed to get them. So they're, they're rightfully, I don't, they're not wrong for feeling upset about it, but they just don't know. And then it comes back to being this thing where like, oh, Melser, da, 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 or Melser compared him to Roman Reigns or whatever else. And it's like, or, or Melser, yeah, like Lacey Evans to Roman Reigns as far as his push in the future and look at where Roman Reigns has always been as far as in the ring compared to Lacey Evans. How the fuck can you say that? It's like, like that has that's nothing not, to that's do. Not, <laughs> or, or then comes to like, oh, so like you were, you know, you were, you know, you were speculating on like how does how the timeline for his, you know, his cash thing went or whatever else, and that's reckless. So therefore, that means you must hate Roman. Therefore, you're talking about this. So like. You're just using that as you're, you know, you're basically using it as an excuse. For whatever else is like, dude, I, I, don't, I, don't, I go on Twitter to read the news feed. Like I rarely tweet, and I, it comes to my news feed. My news feed is polluted with this shit, and I'm just like, oh man, like we were talking about, like of course, like how it's almost cliche to talk about how uh, online discord or discourse is like is toxic and trash yep. but it's like this is a, this is like this week's episode this of is the shining example of of this and i i yeah. saw like a lot of um comparisons thrown out there between the paid situation uh the daniel bryan situation uh and this is like how wwe operates as a company they like to be secretive with these type of things uh in daniel bryan's yeah. case it wasn't exactly the same because they did announce that a he had to retire the first time and he would mm -hmm. talk about it on raw and b uh when he was cleared they said daniel bryan has breaking he is cleared you will hear from him him tonight so that is a complete like you know fallacy anyone that's compared it to that situation um yeah but hopefully the dude is um <laughs> hopefully he's he's good and ready to go he's been you know he's been caught in some pictures you're muted james uh he's been um caught in some pictures uh at a personal training deal i guess in hawaii he looked very huge and big and healthy and look, looks like he's ready to get at it 
Yeah, and that's all that matters. Like, all the other shit, like, is just that other shit. Like, move that to the side and focus on the fact that, like, this dude that a lot of people care about and regardless of whether or not people felt the way about his wrestling career in one way or the other was a, was an important piece for the last decade of professional wrestling. And it looks like he's okay. Like all the other shit is irrelevant. Fuck all the other stuff. Like, like, when, like when he comes back, potatoes. like when he comes back, feel free to boom like you like normally do because if they come out here half stick stepping i will have no problem uh uh calling it out and, and telling y'all where it's all going wrong but that has really nothing to do with like this dude's life and it has like nothing to do with him you know basically how do i say this it has nothing to do with the cancer and everything like that be like take that like your take the hostility that you know if you have hostility towards like how he's booked and everything like that save that for that because oh you'll get your chance like when they put him back on top <laughs> you'll get your chance trust me <laughs> and, well, if, and, if they, and if they do it wrong which wwe they can do it wrong at you know at any point it's going to be there for you this is not the thing to trip over i feel like yeah like yeah i tend to agree like or uh, I mean, I do find it in poor taste that like, they're like, can he at least have a grace period where he's not getting booed for fuck's sake, please, please, I please. Mean, I mean, if they, if they <laughs> look, no, I'll no, tell no, you no, this. No, no, I'm, I'm agree with you. Like, look, let's say, like, look, like if, if they if, if they, they commit play, if they this book ultimate him over six months, if they book him over six months. Like, don't boo him. But then, like, the second they start fucking up things up. Like, yeah, you can boo because, like, a lot of things when it comes to this with WWE is, like, when they get heat or whatever else, it's not actually about the act. Like, Baron Corbin doesn't have fucking heat. He's, he has go away heat. Yeah. He has, why the fuck, Vince, are you putting this dude out here no. to waste our fucking time with this bad TV every single week heat? Or why is Lacey Evans about to get a why is Lacey fucking mega push. on my TV screen? Well, she doesn't have heat at all yet, but when she eventually gets heat, it's going to be the same old same old like this person ain't ready or good enough and that's supposed to be their entire re- that's supposed to be the entire reason why you have heat and that's supposed to they're really good at pissing you off it's all oh, they're they're in, they're mm-hmm. kind of incompetent therefore like they should be on my tv screen yeah um yeah so i i just hope they don't put him in, uh and they just don't shoehorn him into the main event because that grace period you're talking about james will disappear if they put him in the, in the universal title match off rip yeah 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 um i i mean i'm not even let's why Booki, know, booking know, wise booking wise stuff, but so, like so there's like you know I, I just want to focus i'm just happy like let's get to that when it gets there right like and you know keep out be wary of it be mindful of it of whenever if and when in the top possibilities um layout that it could happen to where that happens at wrestlemania or if it could but like I, i'm just focused on roman's back and we definitely anything that resembles a fucking star on Raw, or anything that gets and or anything that has Rome, anything that has him on there means there's less time for some of these fucking people that have no Buffoons. business being um, given t- TV time. So like that means that the, the fact that there's more Roman means there's going to be less, or we think anyway, there's going to be less Corbin Lashley. Elias, so good. There, just, on there, that, look, just, just, just from that perspective, I'm I'm over the moon that he's coming, that he may be coming back. There's some motherfuckers he can mow down right there. So, yeah, <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him like whoop their ass at WrestleMania. So, look, look, no, no heat neither. They don't know he he whoops his ass. They whoop he he whoops their ass, and the next week he whoops their ass. The next week he whoops <laughs> their ass. Then at pay per view he whoops their ass, and then moves on. Like that's the whole look, thing. You want to get this dude, bro? The the get wrong range this is the easiest layup in the history of the company right mostly their whole fuck ass faction yes like if i was them i would literally line these i would line geek after geek up uh in front of him and just let him maul fuckers like when he when he comes back and then eventually you know by the time SummerSlam comes you know shoot him right back the fuck up like Be, look he, he look he beats the hell out of him he gives him a look he he let he gets caught off one time he, he shakes it off and he beats the hell out of him and he goes on to the next match like <laughs> like, they, like they need to be done with like how they how they handled him before like like how they were booking his his matches and you know uh the joe matches the lesnar matches like just him no. being this underdog no. dude no man have this man 
fucking murder people. Like that that's that's what's gonna like get keep people into him. And I'm saying it right now. What's the date? February twenty fourth. Now <laughs> Now you know we gonna we gonna uh, we gonna see as as they say. Yeah. So, um. So this weekend we also got some other news, James. Uh, fresh off the Conrad and the Liar podcast, as James likes to term it, Bruce Pr- Pritchard is back in a major capacity in wwe creative uh if any of you guys have frequented uh the podcast uh you would notice that bruce pritchard is a notorious liar and uh someone that doesn't really have a grasp of modern wrestling right now who i don't know what the value of his mind in 2019 is right now he has plenty of experience um what do you think when when you saw this news hit the timeline, James? When you saw it hit the group chat, I imagine oh. your reaction was like, "What?" It was a, it was just like a, a, a exasperation and an eye roll in um and the thought of like thinking about how where we are and part of the reason why we're in this problem is because they've been doing this fifty fifty booking um, for about a decade or maybe longer and. They, this motherfucker sat on his podcast and tried to justify Triple H beating Booker T at uh, WrestleMania uh, nineteen. What did he say? What, what What did he say? I. It's been so long. I'll have to dig it okay, up. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Um. But yeah, I, it's just um. Like I think, like I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? It's at one point, one end is like you think of where the rest of pro wrestling is and you think about uh, the, the look for new ideas as fresh perspectives and, um, and things outside of WWE and like, he's been, he was a guy that was with the company from like for 20 fucking years and is now back. And, you know, you think of the people that, you know, that you think of or people that were responsible for most of your, from that era that you grew up, watching or, or even if you didn't grow up watching the stuff that you watch and the, some of the best stuff and you think of and what that stuff's tied to and you think of normally like you know occasionally you hear about like some of the stuff some of the crazy stuff off the wall stuff that it worked was like that was like you know one that was like the top that was like the 10 percent of the time where rusev's or sorry rusev's uh where russo's you know bad jumpers actually went in right and then, <laughs> and then but the rest of it is for the organization the structure is it's you know it's it's Pat Patterson is that is Pat Patterson, Jerry uh, or uh, Jim Ross, Cornette, you know uh, JJ Dillon at times or you know or Brisk or Briscoe and like that you know and then you also have Pritchard there, but you don't really hear much about Pritchard until this podcast, right? Um, and I'm not saying it doesn't mean he wasn't doing work, or whatever else. I'm sure he's, he's responsible for a lot of great things. He, but you hear that podcast, and you talk about and. You know, when Conrad does the who booked this shit, and he's, he's like, huh, it wasn't Russo, it was me. All right. <coughs> oh, shit, the air balls. And, and yes, I had some home runs. Uh, but that was also 20 years ago. And like the only, for me, the only, um, the only positive I see on this is, is this is a person that knows how, to, that knows how to deal with Vince. And, also that yes maybe he can teach other people how to deal with Vince that that's my point so be able to get their ideas through to try to make it seem like it's Vince's idea and they can go with it and then also him him being in an era where like they knew how to structure shows regardless of the length they knew how to structure shows and not make it look like oh yeah we're going to try to make we're going to make this wrap around towards you know at the bottom of a a segment to try to get you to tune back we're going to make that not look like fucking train wreck tv we're gonna make it look like something that makes you want to come back and watch us who the tune out because you're like what the fuck is that is it did they just go off book is this going rogue so like there are you know like if he brings some if he brings a structure to making these televisions that the television shows better as far as their formats then that's a win just alone like now as far as booking decisions and creative decisions and um storylines and trying to and picking up and dropping stuff i don't think it's gonna help that at all yeah um <clears throat> 
it, it's crazy. Like the um, the whole thing with his podcast was he was never trying to go back to WWE or they'd never bring him back. Um, he, he played good soldier long enough to where he came back around the block. And, and you know, this is – you know, we had the firing of Arn Anderson over the weekend, supposedly uh, in the agent's position, where he would basically he was he's been around since WCW closed, right? And yep. he pretty much stopped. And, and, and I was, you know, told that the job of agents uh, is essentially to lie to the wrestlers and sell hey. sell them on storylines that hey. suck. Rich, where did you hear that story about about them trying to st- sell people on bad ideas from? Who who's that? Who do you hear that from? Dave. No, no, no. You also heard from Pritchard. Pritchard used to say that, like, Pritchard, you yeah. know, you, used to, you have to sell the talent on ideas even if they weren't good or great because that's the play that's being called or whatever else. As opposed to, you hear a story about our Anderson and Anderson would hear, like, people would come back and be like, Arn, that fucking sucks. And he'd be like, yep, but that's what you get paid for. At least so <laughs> one person's honest, another person is just a fucking, you know, another person is just, he'll do whatever because he ain't got no fucking soul. Or he sold it a long time ago. Yeah. And we see one's getting fired and the other one, or whatever else. And we talk about, you know, with Vince and the, is it your heel to die on or whatever else? They fired, apparently they fired, uh, you know, Arn Anderson over a, something that happened at a house, house show. show. Yeah. So they, like, you're not me, getting me, me to believe that. Like, huh, as far as huh. like, that shit's been coming. Meanwhile, do you, do you ever hear the reason why they actually fired, uh, or, or is less reason why they actually fired Pritchard? Something with Stephanie, right? Because he brought a fucking gun to her. Oh my god! Not to use it on nobody, because like apparently, like um, the uh, is a hurricane in 08, uh, the one in Houston, uh, which is kind of the reason why uh, Houston got people. Okay, so I can't remember the name of the uh, the 08 uh, hurricane, but um, there's a reason why a lot of people did not leave this time around for the hurricane last year, two years ago, because uh-huh. um, they. People, it was bottlenecking on I-10, and they just getting you know, and there's a lot of people that caught, got stuck on the road, so they, a lot of people end up staying because they, you know, realize like either have to leave early or don't leave at all. So, and it caused a lot of harm. So, he was he he was displaced from that hurricane, and he was living with I believe the, the word was he was living with JBL, and he didn't want to leave his fucking gun with JBL for some reason. So he <laughs> so he brought it to work. Not just to bring, just to have to have it, you know, somewhere else and you know, whatever else. And I'm gonna get this fucking storyline through today. Like, <laughs> yeah. So somebody found out about it, and then and Stephanie heard it, and she was like, "Did you bring your fucking gun to work?" And he was like, "Uh, I don't know what the response was, but more or less like he heard, he heard, you know, she found out it was talked about. It's, she told him to go home, and then a week later he was fired. So compare that." Our, you know, he got artists got fired over a house show as a person that, you know, is reverable and everyone cares about and tells the truth is a straight shooter and preaches a fucking snake and a liar. It's amazing how this business <laughs> and, works. And he brought a fucking gun to work and they brought him back. And it's been great. It's been a decade, but it still brought this dude back to work after bringing a gun to work. That was a very successful podcast that him and uh, an entertaining podcast because as much as like he lied That's on it one. and everything like that, I I love I, I like I don't want to say I fell in love with Conrad's house, but I grew to respect like just how yes how like much he would just basically just stick it to uh, these fuckers and including like if you want more of that like the Eric Bischoff podcast he does is like even yeah. better for like the WCW stuff, um, but with it like Pritchard is kind of found a way to to rebuild himself in the public eye through this podcast is drawn all over the country and you know if you have that guy there maybe you have you, you get excited people that do like you know f- feel like they're on Pritchard's side or whatever right <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe you you feel excited about this possibly uh, yeah i mean it, it's a, it's a fds it's it's uh it's a lieutenant of of the of the wwe apologist coming back home right like yeah and also, like, don't get me wrong, like, if not for that podcast, a lot of stuff ain't, ain't doesn't hit the way it, it hits. Like, like, Cornette, or, uh, not Cornette, but, um, Jeff Jarrett, that little two-week run he had, or, yeah, like, four, or three days, directly or, off yeah, the eight-day run he had, or whatever, that never happened by him. Like, him doing that, you know, singing the, the, the Jarrett song, and, like, him burying Jeff Jarrett's daddy at the same time. <laughs> like, a lot of these stories, like, he actually provided a lot of insight and things looking to like, you know, for me, like 
going back and cherry picking through his catalog after he already got running and like to go through like of course the first thing I went through was what first thing I went through was the screw job, right? Yeah. But like going through all that stuff and just to hear another voice, someone that was actually there and had a first time accounting and like granted like his accounting is always fucking um account or it goes through uh, a certain reliable, filter. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, but it is good. To, it is good to hear some of these stories being retold or whatever. because, like, in kind of like a, as a place to be documented. Because, you know, like it's it's one thing to go back on the net on the network, go through stuff. But like, they don't give you a guide map on what to look for, or whatever else. Like, but when they do the fan voting for what of what pay per views or what uh, you know uh, event happened or something that happened off screen to talk about or whatever else. Like, it was cool to for them to vote for people to vote on what they want and then like they kept rotation stuff going in so like they wouldn't just burn through all the hot stuff and then like they go through all the stuff and then along the way like get you dra- get you caught up in stuff that like maybe you weren't really checking for but because they drop something you really want to hear every few weeks that you go through and listen through like that was really helpful in uh for the history of of, of wrestling because you know you have like uh you know the back to the territories within K Fed commentary stuff with Cornette and jj dylan or whoever else or uh or, or even you know bruno or whatever but it's cool to actually like have that in audio form and not the you know come out of pocket for it or whatever else they want to talk about it, regardless of how reliable it was or wasn't and then you also had cornet or you also had uh conrad with go- going through the observers over that over that time frame to kind of fat check or kind of lay out the the template of what was actually going down and then like it's always funny to me like where Conrad is going through all the stuff, all these observers, and <laughs> and Pritchard is is agreeing with the stuff that's written ninety percent of the time, eighty five percent of the time, and then you know out of that twenty times, the two or three times out of twenty times, he agree with the details and stuff going down. He goes, see. Yeah. That Melser guy, he's a fucking liar and bullshit and fuck Dave Melser and, and, and all and that whole stuff. that whole like, movement that started. So, so you mean to tell me that he's accurate like eighty five percent of the time, but not but not but like the three but the three times you have some or you know three out of twenty times you have an issue with it. Like then I'll say he's the biggest fucking liar in the world. It's like okay, gotcha, makes sense, <laughs> cool. Like this is a con meanwhile business. he meanwhile he's you know it's like look say whatever you want to about about Melser or whatever else, but like it is funny to where it's like. Even if you do think most is a bullshit artist, you have somebody that's backstage with uh, that, that was, you know, Vince's right hand man or one of his right hand men for for all those years, for two decades, and like literally, like, yep, Mills is right, 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 Mills is wrong, Mills is right, 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 wrong, right, 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 wrong, right. So it's like, okay, well, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and, and this like Melser's always like kind of took the fuck Dave Melser thing in stride and said this is all yeah. entertainment this is a con right. and right. that's what Pritchard was doing it was a work y'all like <laughs> and, and, the, and the bad part was like he's talking about like you know about like it was, some of the stuff was like really personal but some, or it felt like it was personal on his end uh, with the Melser thing and then like was that that was in New Orleans? That was uh, Orlando when they Orlando. met up in person. Yeah, right? no, Orlando is like Orlando. Hmm, interesting, interesting. That like you want to like you're able to sit down and smile with this fucking guy that you quote unquote hate and you bury on air like all every uh, like every single week and then like want to take it one of his hand because you know he talks more people than you do right naturally as opposed to you being inside that fucking bubble for twenty years in and out of the bubble for twenty years and you know like. It, it, it really is interesting. Yeah, I, I hope he has a clue on how to handle like the evolving landscape of wrestling. This may have been like a battle line. Uh, make sure that he doesn't fall into the hands of uh, competition. Uh, I, I I heard somebody mention that uh, maybe this is like like if Conrad wants to take Undertaker away from Vince, then Vince will take will take Pritchard from, from Conrad. Conrad. Yes, I I think I heard something like that too. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I imagine the response out of the AEW camp was like, oh, y'all picked him up? We wasn't looking for him no way, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, uh, speaking of, of AEW and, you know, different other uh, ventures, there were some releases in WWE this week. Some you knew were coming and some that we didn't know uh, were was happening. So, um as we mentioned, the Arn Anderson deal uh, a little bit earlier, but 
gone from WWE officially are Hideo Itami and Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger uh, wrote a uh, lengthy statement and kind of a new way for guys to ask for their release. Put the public pressure on the company. Uh, take it straight, essentially, to the world. Put it, Take it to the Summer Jam screen. Like, I, I want out this fucker. So Ty Dillinger was like, before the rumors begin to spread, let me set some things straight ahead of time. This evening, I requested my release from WWE. In the past five and a half years with them, I've seen and done some wonderful things. Things that I'm very proud of and will never forget. I have met and have unquestionably worked with some of the greatest talent on this earth, and the pleasure has all been mine. I feel at this time, this decision, as extremely difficult as it was, is what is best for myself and WWE. I wish to continue to grow as a performer and offer those paying hard-earned money to watch a show I'm performing on a little more of myself. To the male and female locker rooms, coaches and producers, to the ring and production crew, all the way up to the very top of WWE, and most of all, the fans, I wish you all the very best and thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything. And also, TJP was let go as well. Uh, supposedly, there was a disciplinary issue there. Uh, we haven't got the details on yet, but uh, Ty Dillinger and Dale, uh, I've asked for their releases. Uh, the the numbers keep growing ever since January 1st. Dudes, you know, people, are, these stories are coming out. Motherfuckers want their releases. They see the writing on the wall. And there was only so long Ty Dillinger was going to lie to the world on Twitter when everybody asking asking him, "What are you doing? Where are you? Are you in catering?" Like, and then so, <laughs> saying how much he loves his job and everything. There was only so long that was going to happen. Um, now this guy's like he's a you know he's been in the WWE system for like twelve years on and off. You know, going through different in you know incarnations of developmental and finally like getting some type of a gimmick and then him get into the main roster and them fucking killing it like dead like oh, damn near immediately and that sucks for a dude because like the thing is it's like can you get over the guy got over right but apparently that doesn't mean something so <laughs> you know like yeah. like you know it, everyone's not meant to be to get over like so because <laughs> i imagine right. that you know with dillinger he has like a ceiling on you know what he what he could have been but i i would think there's room for that dude like but apparently dillinger thought otherwise it feels like he has more to offer to the business uh what do you make of uh the the dillinger uh release because that's kind of the shocking one here tjp you can kind of see like his actions on twitter uh from what i've been hearing is happening on 205 live he's like showing up with a goatee gaining weight uh and you can see just from the uh the outpour on social media where there was none for TJP. Like when, you know, Kenta came out and said he was going back or he was leaving WWE or whatever, all the people came out, I respect you, thank you, Kenta, posting these beautiful pictures of them. TJP not got a damn thing up there, so <laughs> that that speaks volumes. Uh, but as far as the Dillinger thing, what do you what do you make of that, James? Well, just just to touch, touch quickly on the Hideo Otami thing. It's like, well, Kenta, he was a legend before he ever got there, right? So... Like he was, he was legendary. He can't, can WWE. It didn't work out because he got injured a lot. And then, you know, uh, the idea of what NXT has changed over the last few years, uh, since he'd been there. Um, and then they never found a reason to, you know, they never figure out what to do with him, and, and there was never, it never seemed like it was the right spot for him. So, you know, he's gone. But as far as, uh, the TJP thing, uh, <laughs> I mean, he's not, he, he's not Kenta Kobayashi. Like, you know, it's, like, yeah. it's, it's fine, right? Um, you can do much worse than not being Kenta. Uh, now, as far as Ty, it is kind of... Um, given that he we've, we, we all believe him to be such a good utility player to be able to do anything, like he can be a veteran that, that uh, helps, helps you know, some of the younger guys, some of the young developmental talents, um, you know, get better. Or, or he could be somebody that could be thought of as a in ring coach, you know, someone that could go out there and work while being aged while agenting, or somebody and someone has a gimmick that was legitimately um, that was legitimately a crowd pleaser, and um, someone that actually can still, you know, was still a good hand in the ring. Like, yeah, you figure there's a spot for a guy, and you know, between Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, NXT UK, and, and like you figure that there would be a spot for him to help 
do something and and he requested to go to NXT apparently, but it was he yeah, was denied. Yeah, that's my point. That's my point. That like they saw they were, their idea was like we're just going to keep you on the main roster, not doing shit Ever. forever. <laughs> and it's like okay, um, I can see why you wanted out. And I mean, at least they gave, at least they let him go. Like you know, I imagine for a lot of other people, like. Uh, They've asked for their, they've, they've requested their releases or um, they want to, but either they've already been told no or they feel like their answer is going to be no and they're going to be put on ice for the rest of their life. And the most they can do is just hope that they don't get hurt um, so they don't get fro- their contract froze. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's that's kind of where I'm on the on the tie thing. Um, like, what, what was the last time we saw him smack that? Was it when he was doing the thing with R Truth, or was it when uh, Orton fucked him up? I think it was. I think it was the deal with R Truth when R Truth was showing him how to get into the main event. Yes, trying believe. to show you how to scheme, right? Yeah. yeah. So, oh yeah. So speaking of speaking of, uh, do we need to put an APB out and put him on back of milk, milk carton? Yes, R Truth won the United States Championship, and we have not seen him since. Seems yeah, like man. it was a waste. <laughs> yeah, um, like that bill could be on Andrade right now, and maybe it's still time for him because he. Could, I can imagine him just coming out and just having to just beat that man for the title. Um, they should so like that should be booked at Fastlane. That should be r Truth and Andrade in a ten minute match, and r Truth comes out here and reminds us what he can do, but he ultimately puts over uh, Andrade. Yeah, but I, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm just saying, like, as far as they're not making use of the fact that he changed the title. Um, they didn't make use of the fact that, uh, you know, like we haven't seen Ray in what three weeks, yep. four weeks, yeah, same thing. Like, there's a lot of guys that just come, like, especially on SmackDown, um, because they actually have talented people that don't just fucking get overexposed and murder <laughs> and make you wish you weren't watching. Uh, but yeah, like there's a lot of guys just getting left off, and you know, you figure like, all right, well, look at Raw, look at SmackDown, maybe, just maybe. You move some of these people that can actually do something that proven that they actually can do something like too raw to help these other guys learn the ropes on how to get the fuck over or like not be a fucking drag every time you have to watch them. Yeah. Nope. And, and it's funny because I think um when we did the LLP show, not for this week, but two weeks ago, I said like, I don't care what the excuse is. It's fake. You talk about, you talk about <laughs> when people talk about booking themselves in the corners and this and this is the way they're doing this in the third. And, oh, this is after the Kevin Owens thing about like you don't know you can come into Raw or SmackDown. I said, look, man, you're right. This is bullshit. He got hurt. He was on Raw. He got hurt on Raw, and now he's gonna come back. He doesn't know where he's at. That just t- well, you know what that means? That means that this this shit is fake. So therefore. When Raw fucking sucks because these dudes can't cut the mustard in the words of X Pac, yeah. then, then you need to move some shit around to make this show not be a fucking drag. And it's, sure enough, the they brought in the NXT. Look, 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 hey, we we know where the fuck Roman gonna be when he come back. Why we don't know where Kevin Owens gonna be when he comes yeah. back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, but e- but even 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 with that point made, right? Like, you can bring our truth over there. You can bring. Ray over there or whoever else is like not doing anything on SmackDown because it's only two hours and like you kind of got that handled right now. Yeah. Like, like you mean tell me they couldn't use a Jeff Hardy like to help get over Elias or whatever or whoever whoever the fuck else like when Jeff is you know like the fourth baby face. Well, you can move Orton's ass still- over. You can do yeah. Like-, like yeah. You're talking about like the heel because the heel side is so weak, right? It's like. Given how bad, how badly the Ambrose thing when they had to turn him back, they've turned him back face weekly, uh, very meekly in the last uh, two weeks. And then Corbin's the top, or Corbin and McIntyre, who they completely just, ugh. And Lashley, like, yeah, man, bring Randy Orton over there. Why can't he be the top heel on Raw right now? There's no reason why he couldn't. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so do you remember when um, TJP was on the Mount Rushmore of the all time dumb baby phases, James? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I saw you on Twitter talking about it <laughs> and it blocked, I had blocked out my memory, like about how fucking stupid that whole TJP and uh, Brian, Brian Kendrick. Kendrick thing was. That was like part of the initial murdering of 205 Live. Cause that was, I went back, right? I literally went into the, um, cause I remember I, I had lost my mind on the podcast, um, when it happened. So I went to the, the profile DB to try to figure out when that match was. 
then I figured out it was a Hell in a Cell 2016. Then I went to the podcast for a review of the show and listened to it. And I was like, you know what? I thought I was really angry. Uh, I thought about, like I thought like I went nuts on that on that thing that happened. And I thought about like compared to like the show we did two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Like, that was like that was like a six or a seven compared to the ten. That, that was <laughs> what I did two weeks ago. The ten. Like this show has made, like this show the last two years you. made me like exponentially more angry. So, um, but my, the point is still the same. Is like Brian Kendrick is a, is a number one contender for this uh, cruiserweight title. Yep. He's trying to he he goes backstage before the match at Hell in a Cell to tell TJP. This might be my please, last shot. <laughs> this could be my last shot. Please lay down for me because I don't know if I'm getting another shot. Even though no one ever, nobody in management or no one ever came to him and said anything about you. You know, yes. Y- y- next time you lose, you're done or any of that. Like you're a little wishy washy. We don't know if you if you necessarily None keep it up the standard of late. Nothing. None of that. And then just a schemer. Then, right. And then they and then they proceed to go and have a match and then this fucking and then Brian Kendrick fakes an ankle injury and then this fuck and then the crowd literally groans yep and then the and then, cause everyone knew like it's a fucking it's, it's a fake act he's pretending he's, he's sandbagging it's and a walk he, but, all, but the only two people that don't know that don't realize what the fuck's going on are the ref it's and TJP's TJP. dumbass TJP goes see what's going on. He gets slapped with that captain's hook, and then he, and then he taps out or he passes. Out. I can't remember which one. And then, you know, like say what you want to Brian Kendrick. Brian Kendrick um, theme music works like it goes, uh, and his music starts playing, and they hand him the belt. And sure enough, he holds up the belt, and in in his the music, he goes, "I'm a man with a plan." And I was like, "What kind of fucking?" And I remember on the podcast saying it, and I re- listened to it as Ellis was like, "What kind of fucking convoluted, circuitous plan was that? Ill thought, ill prepared, makes no sense." <laughs> just hope it works. <laughs> yeah, just hope he, you, just like, hope you catch his dumb ass limit, and he did. It worked. Not like you know, not like I, you know, I'm going to play like I'm getting beat, and I'm going to play like I'm injured vet and I can't keep up and I'm going to get sympathy or whatever else or he's actually going to really lay down to me because I just guilt tripped him before the match it's like no we're going to have a regular ass match then at the and then at the, at the at the end of the match I'm just going to pretend like I have her ankle I'm going to sucker this damn dummy and I'm going to slap my move on him and choke him the fuck out and TJP right. never won back the uh, Cruiserweight Championship from that point so yeah. I remember comparing it to Lex Luthor's plot to try to get Batman and Superman to destroy each other in the Batman uh, versus Superman movie that was like critically panned as being like one of the worst movies that ever had such a uh, such a gigantic box office growth. Like it's it, it was one of those like it's just like your plan makes no fucking sense. This is a terrible story. I wanted to end. You killed the cruiserweight division. Like and it's funny, right? Because actually, uh, looking listen back to it, I actually said the same thing that I said about the NXT call ups. Uh, last week or on the LLP show, which is like, you can't bring up a bunch of people all together at once and try to get them over at the same time, which is what they were trying to do with the cruiserweight division. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, and then I remember saying, like I said at the time, like they didn't learn the lesson from what they did with the women when they brought in uh, Charlotte, Charlotte and Becky and Sasha all together at once. And they made it three factions of out of nine women. And they tried to push all nine women at the same time. Like they didn't learn the lessons from, that when it came to the cruiserweights and they don't learn lessons you know, and you look at what they did on monday night with uh with <laughs> diy and and alistair and ricochet and it's like they may not be learning that lesson either yeah like, they can't put them on the same shows all together like they got to split them on put them on different shows like they're doing they're putting uh uh Champa, uh, not Champa, uh, Gargano versus Cesaro on SmackDown. Like, either Aleister Black or Ricochet need to not be, be on, on SmackDown. Raw. They, like, they, they need, need to be, be on, on Raw and only Raw for this week or whatever. So they can, if they want to swap back or whatever else, they need to miss a match, not have all three act or you know three acts of four people every like doing double duty on every single show. I'm just it's wondering not- why they can't assign these motherfuckers like somewhere. Like, uh, it's just like it reeks of them like not. Like, how are these people ever going to get put in any storylines? They're not because they can't culminate anywhere. Right, and I, 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 I see it as it's the idea of all right. Well, normally we have some g- big gigantic person or dominant person. They just squash a bunch of people. Yep. 
until it's time for them to actually like do something like you squash people for for months on end like you remember like after they did the brand split they had Nia Jax and Braun on Raw and they were both just pummeling jobbers for months until it was time to get dropped into something and in this case of Braun like like he was doing that for the, that whole fall and winter until it was time for uh, Sami the Sami Zayn stuff and then from the Sami Zayn stuff it transitioned into the Roman stuff and Sami Zayn on Reigns got that man over to a star in the span of you know six months roughly right um well, I think their idea is they need to pick up some wins, but we don't have enough roster, enough people that are actually like it matters that they beat these people over the next you know x amount of time if we just put them on Raw or SmackDown. So we'll make it a collaborative effort to have them just basically beat people for a certain amount of time so they have credibility and they're actually over and people actually you know know what their finishes are and whatnot, and then we'll throw them into a feud or whatever else, or you know, or maybe they just they're just here just for. You know, they're here for one week and then they're gone for, you know, whenever they do the tapings and then they come back from next week or whatever. So they're here like three weeks out of the month or whatever until they, you know, figure out what happens after. Hopefully the brand split um, solves all this. Yeah, the, yeah. the shake yeah. up. So what I'm thinking is like, this is like what they're doing right now with them for the time being is like their quote unquote squash opportunity. Like they're just here and they're picking up wins over some people that have some type of name credibility with the crap, with the fan base, fan bases until it's time to actually like implement them into something. Like, I would love for them to actually do something, do something with any of them come WrestleMania. But like, knowing their history, I don't see them. Well, I don't see any anymore. of these people having a match. And, and then you think yeah. about the last set of call ups that they came up with this same strategy uh, of putting them on both shows. We've seen them do losses and everything like that. The second um, this crop of guys starts losing, it's gonna feel really bad. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So, but at least um. You had mentioned something well, about an invasion, James. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't say anything about invasion. I said something about a oh, takeover. takeover. So, Sorry. Yeah, so um, they brought the four. So you think about uh, you hear you hear word that like WWE really thought that they were going to get. They really thought that they were going to land Cody and Kenny and, and the Young Bucks. And, you know, you hear the reports from, um, or you hear the talk about the talks of that that they had with Triple H and, and the Young Bucks about saying like what the plans were for them and they had you know six, legitimately six months worth of storyline and they were gonna they were gonna get pushed to WrestleMania and and all that and all that jazz and like actually it was plans for them. Well you look at it, all right. Ricochet, Kenny, Cody, Alistair, DIY, Young Bucks and you think that, like, you know, if that was a plan to have the men fall, like, there was going to be some type of invasion angle of some sort. They weren't just going to bring them all together and not act like they weren't actually, like, connected in some way. So the connections NXT, they all come in and they get wins and they get 50-50 immediately. They came in and they got a week full of worth of wins. They got more, they came in at a certain level on Raw and on SmackDown, they were more over than they were a day later, <laughs> right? Yeah. So... You assume like if they keep getting these wins on TV, like and you know Johnny has alluded to it backstage, like on Monday and also on Tuesday, and uh, along with Champa, that like you know we're here for a reason, and then and then the next week he was like, or the next day it was like, you know we're here to take over, and like you know another, and you're tired of hearing about invasions, and it's like it's not look, it's not an invasion, it's a takeover. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 like in theory, that could be where they're going. Like, do I think that's what they're going to ultimately do? Um, I don't think so because those guys are. I mean, Ricochet and Champa and and got, Johnny are awfully small. Um, but I don't. I don't think you know if you're just gonna have them get wins over guys regardless of size. Like Alistair beat up, out beat up Elias, and that's a big dude. Um, DIY beat up. Um, or they beat uh, the bar, which is like the biggest, ta- you know, the tallest tag team they have. And so, like, we're kind of already over that. Like, yeah. that barrier where Vince is, you know, stuck on size, like, you got to kind of throw it to the side when, like, you know, you look at the top stars and it's like, aside from Roman on the men's side, anyway, aside from like Roman and Strowman, like, all their top guys are smaller guys. Like, Brian's small, a smaller guy. AJ's a smaller guy. Seth is like a, is like a smaller than, like, the he's like the Shawn michael size which is still kind he's of like deceptive small. like <laughs> yeah like he's like he's in that i want to like you know like we, when we grew up like 
we were running like the small guys were you know quote unquote brett yeah in you Jericho, know and like benoit you know, yeah and, you know and sting when he doesn't have a a, a tan right um, <laughs> so so like you know and sean was a size below that but like you know now that's kind of changed. Like Sean is kind of like where Seth is in the area. Like, so he's still a smaller, a small guy. He's not like, he's a normal size human being as opposed to, you have to be six, four and 260 pounds of solid muscle to even get Vince to, to even want to push you. Like, so that, that's kind of changed. So that always like, helps I though. Think, yeah. Right. So I think that's kind of, you know, like you can try to push these tall guys, but like, look where Strowman's got you. I mean, I know the Sherman. Like, look where Corbin's got you on 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 Raw. Look where uh, Lash has gotten you on Raw. Look where uh, McIntyre. Look where McIntyre was six, seven weeks ago compared to where he is now. That you start beating him and you start putting him next to these these fucking guys and ain't no they ain't worth a damn right now. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you damaged the entire brand. Like, what's what you gonna do? Like, make it worse by making small guys go over? No. Like. They get themselves over based on how good they work and how much fire they have, and like, and they already have credibility with your hardcores, the people that bitch about about shit the most. Then chances are they have the best chance to see, as opposed to, you know, um, the fuck, <laughs> like the fucking uh, the gi- I don't know what you call them, like a, like the the natural disasters. Was that name of the typhoon and the earthquake? Yes, it was. Yeah, like natural disaster slash. Uh, the bushwhackers that are de- or, uh, heavy, machinery. heavy machinery or Lacey Evans, which is like, I don't know what the fuck that is. EC3 who don't talk, even though like he's not a good wrestler and the only thing, the reason why you would even hire him is because he's such a good talker, which is like, okay, so he's going to be dead if you don't want him to talk. And then motherfucker uh, who's somewhere roaming the, the Rocky Mountains just in hiding. Uh, <laughs> Lars. So, uh, yeah. Lars, so it's like like that Those, ain't gonna get over like yeah. and then nikki who you've yo and nikki cross who you yo yo twice already she's she was a face she was a heel and she's a face again already so it's like and doing jobs that, that means you don't you know, I mean y'all ain't got no plans for her anyway if y'all doing that already so it was like all right well it's funny she's got yeah. no, she's gotten over like way more than lacey evans absolutely so you want to know why Cause she's better at professional wrestling at this stage. <laughs> like it's not a fucking shock. Like, <laughs> like it's so, yeah, like it's so funny how right you look at. And I, I will talk about this during um. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this uh as as I start up the the NFC Then Now Forever podcast and you track like the progress of someone like Charlotte, right? <clears throat> and you look at like the first match we ever saw Charlotte was that second takeover between uh for the vacated uh, women's title between her and Natty who went down there uh to help along with TJ and Cesaro or sorry Tyson Kidd and Cesaro and yeah um like you look at where she started out and she had that blow she had that match and just like wait a second we don't normally get this out of any women's vision like who, wait that's it's Rick first daughter holy shit she's six, she's like five ten and and look oh my god like she's gonna be like a Brock Lesnar type person, right? We thought she's gonna be like female Brock Lesnar. She's gonna be like this gigantic, like she's this great athlete. She's she doesn't, you know, she doesn't. She's really young, but like, you know, she's gonna get there. Look at her, like, look what she's already doing, right? And then you fast forward to where she at now. We're like, she's like, she's one of the very best workers in the entire company, bar none, regardless of gender. She's absolutely elite in that in that sense, and. You see Lacey Evans and you see the tool for her. like you see the height, you see the 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 physique, uh you see she has the look that WWE goes for. No judge reach wink, yellow hair. Um like she's somebody that in a sense of before NXT changed or whatever spot or at changed at point, like she's somebody that should absolutely be somebody that is still in a, in a NXT down there getting three matches a week and getting better progressively as opposed to what she's doing right now, which is like they ain't gonna do nothing for her. Yeah, yeah. It's just gonna like create like as soon as all this, these uh, these plans leak, like it ain't gonna be good for her. I think uh, I think I saw Clive saying like, what chance does she stand now with that out out there on her now? And as much as chances like Dana Brooke had. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember you telling me like when before Dana Brooke got hurt on NXT, she actually looked like she had some. Yeah. And for me, it's like. I see, I see, I see that Lacey Evans is a very good athlete, so I'm not gonna count her out. But it's more or less I'm thinking of like they're giving her su- it's such a disservice. It's of too what, much too soon. Where they're, where they're sliding her 
that like I don't know if she'll be able to overcome it, and if she ever overcomes it, it might be too late. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the thing with when it comes to booking and and you know talent development and all that other stuff is like, oh man, the only person y'all have developed in NXT over the last like two three years is like Velveteen. Yeah, and it's like if this was development. Develop a, a real deal with developmental brand like these people will be giving these spots and I remember you talked about why like don't people you remember you say this and I, uh, I feel like you were right for pulling this out that like we shouldn't look at Aleister Black versus Lars Sullivan at I think it was Brooklyn or where was it? Uh, that was Chicago I believe. Chicago you're right Chicago we shouldn't look at that as you know they're not you know oh, this is first title defense so what they got Aleister doing it should look at it as like, look man this is actually going to really be developmental in any and even have any shred of it looking like developmental then we need to have matches like this because look where we were for you know three and a half years ago with with takeovers and it was like you know when it was filled with people that you know the Corbins of the world the Charlottes of the world the Bailey Sasha people that didn't have names outside of you know or didn't have this long track record of doing stuff all around the world like someone like yeah. Becky had uh, going out there fighting freaking uh, <laughs> uh well what's her name uh Kimura uh Kiona Kimura uh, on in ja- on these Japanese shows have you ever seen Young Becky Lynch by the way I haven't no she's a string bean <laughs> she is she is so pathetically skinny like she like it, it, anyway so the point is like. All these people that like developed and became like you know the linchpins or, or some of these people that are important people on WWE over the last few years on the main roster like that came from quote unquote nothing like they, they even have some long track record like they're not dead ring they're not dead ringers like a Ricochet or yeah. or even Adam Cole or, or Red Dragon or whatever else like these are people that you know had some going for them but they're here like so like right now we kind of really only have like I guess for lack of you could say Shayna. Even though Shayna had, you know, did start him, did start him runs, did shimmer, you you could say Shayna and, and and then Velveteen, like that's really pretty much kind of it, like because you know Riddle, Riddle's in a vault, Riddle, you know, Riddle's a ringer, did like, he, weekends. He's a yeah. yeah, he's a ringer, like you know, he's a bad kept secret, and like they were kind of keeping contacts on him and con and no, you know no. kind of help guiding to where his career was going, but like at the same time, like. <laughs> He he! I saw that match with Osprey, right? Like, yeah, that's yeah. a ringer. I, like, like, I saw that dude wrestle. I saw that dude wrestle like I believe it was John Davis, like in Tampa, uh, yeah. in front of like a hundred fifty people. Right? You were with us, and right. and it was like that guy's a fucking superstar. Like, right. <laughs> like he can, right. so yeah, like he was out here doing blood sports. Like that's not that's not you know he's already a name on the on the independent scene. Like that's not he's doing. I believe was he doing PWG? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, once you do PWG, you ain't no WWE guy. Like, I mean, like you're not know somebody they found like dominant in the rough and cultivated. Like, yeah. there are a few, there are some of those, but like Riddle ain't one of them. Yeah. Especially in none of, the, I really don't see any of those people that did uh, PWGs as, as that either. Um, hard transition. So we've got uh, Brian. We got a couple more things on the sheet here. You got Dan Bryan and Kofi Kingston's match becoming official um, for the Fast Lane pay per view. It's not WrestleMania. But uh, it is fast lane. Uh, they're going to be having a contract signing this week. Kofi Kingston got the pin over Daniel Bryan to essentially restart the feud again on SmackDown last week. Uh, Shane Man made the announcement. And Kofi is getting his f- first one-on-one championship match ever, I believe, on a pay-per-view. And... Kofi Mania took over Twitter last, uh, last week. And yeah. it was so good to see... I've seen, uh, you know, folks talk about, you know, he's not believable. He's not all these other things, but, and it's more of a function of what WWE has been and where they've kept him. Uh, and uh, I think this is like the, this is such a great story already. Like this is this, this fucking veteran that has been around for all these years and never got a shot. James, movies are written about shit like this. Yeah, Cinderella Man, right? Like, <laughs> yes. So it's like I, I feel like I'm seeing a great story already. Yeah, and also part about like uh, it's not believable. It's like I mean, if you want to do the whole not believable thing, then like, how about we do this? Put Kofi and have him stand next to uh, a, stand next to Daniel Bryan. Then tell me, tell me it's not believable that he could beat his ass. <laughs> no, I'm not saying like a physical fight, but like he's bigger and taller than him. 
and he just is he has uh, not as much experience, but like he's an experienced veteran has been in WWE for, for over thing. a decade. He's been a multiple time. He like he's done everything that there is to do in WWE, but win that title or but win a top title. So what are we talking about? Like, and he's, and he's a babyface versus the heel. Like, it's all there for an underdog story. It's all there for a you know, um, you know, career defining thing. And then you throw in like you know, this whole week of spectacular performances. Like that's why it's all there. Like I don't know how, and I don't think people do this, but like, I don't. I see that like Seth Rollins was once the WWE champion. They had a six month run with the title roughly. Yeah. Um, but you look at where he was before the gauntlet match. And then you looked at where he was after it. And then before they got into the whole situation with bringing Ambrose back and restarting the shield, let's not talk about that part. Let's talk about just how <laughs> popular, let's just talk about how popular he was, you know, um, during that whole spring and into the early summer. And, you know, they more or less recaptured that in, in the quicker session, except with Kofi. And it's like, yes, um, if you, uh, Seth is far higher on the totem pole than, 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 than Kofi. Um, but it's only Kofi's, because you made Kofi it like has, that. Kofi has the time. Yeah, right. But I'm not saying I'm not saying that's like a bad thing. I'm saying yeah. like, but Kofi also has a thing of he has all the time of being a person that's come to all these fucking small ass Ricky Dink towns for for, for a whole <laughs> decade, and you know they've been everywhere, and people have come to see him, and he's always been like this this career baby face people have always loved, and you look at like the amount of respect that people have for him in his business and uh and inside that company, and the amount of respect the fans give him to where like. Aside from, you know, like the only time in life he was in danger of becoming like he fall into that, you know, Dolph Ziggler role, like he broke out into New Day and New Day like took him to a new co- heights in his career as far as selling merchandise and all this other stuff. So like, yes, for someone who's watching it for what it is and say that like, yeah, it seems like his overnight deal, uh, overnight deal, but like, yeah, but I get that. But, but like, if you decide to take a more of a macro approach from it, like, this is really like yes for right now based on where he was before doing being in a um a contending tag team or contending tag team fashion to where he is now like yes I understand that feels like it's overnight success but this is really the over this is like overnight success that has been like eleven years in the making right so once you look back at that like yes he's absolutely somebody that and especially because he got himself fucking hot which is all that really fucking matters like. Yes. When will people get learn t- this? Get a title match pay per view. Like, do, when, like I'm not saying should we even win the title, but if they did, I wouldn't care one way or the other. But like, it's like when when will people learn? Like, all that matters is that you are hot or over. This is like like there's no reason to try to figure this out. There's Let's no see. reason to say why it won't work. Once it's working, yeah. you fucking do it. Like, right. <laughs> like you can make an argument like Hulk Hogan, Hulk, 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 should never work because he can't. Get, he's not a good because. Especially back then in that era, it's like it's it's fucking it's the fucking early eighties and he's bigger than everybody he's wrestling, so how can I get somebody to buy in and, and, and actually want to, you know, believe treat him like he's Robert Gibson when he's working for underneath and in, in, in all his matches. Yeah. And then sure enough, Hulk Hogan literally works for underneath and then overcomes out of a super hole, points you, gives you a big boot and a and a and a uh, atomic leg drop for a three, and they sell out the entire country for like the next decade, roughly, right? <laughs> like that was supposed to work because he's too much bigger than the than the hills he's fighting all the time, except for like Andre, right? Yeah. So like there are, there are, these rules are not rules. These rules aren't rules. They're guidelines. They're like, look, it's just meant history, to be like, we don't fucking... think things can work because X, Y, or Z. And then like you try them because someone's over and then you go from there. And then if things don't work, you can always rein it back towards following, trying to try to follow that guideline. Like that's all that, that's, they're not rules. Like there's no such thing as always and never when it comes to why things will work or don't work. It's always a probably maybe not look at the history and I'm not, and well, I'm not saying that just be before. like, dismissive. right? Like when we talk about why things don't work, or whatever, we just like, look, man, like, yeah, I mean, it. Could, and that's why I can know? like tend to like spot shit early, and then I'll be like, I'll jump out the fucking window and be like, this is bullshit. They shouldn't be doing this. Like when they reunited Team <laughs> Hell No, I was like, this is a death knell essentially for <laughs> Daniel Bryan as a baby face. Like, and what did it turn out to be, James? A death knell. But the thing is, right? 
they were the crowd was super into it when they came back. But like, if it actually started working out for the better, right, and they actually regained that that 2012 magic, would you have been like, it still it, it shouldn't have worked? Or he was like, well, I mean, the talent overcame the, the decision or whatever else, right? That's pretty much what it would be, right? Right. So when it comes to the thing with um with Kofi and people not believing it, it's just like. You know he has the talent to overcome this, right? Or maybe you don't you don't buy his talent even though you've seen him in your face for eleven years, which is like if you've seen him in your face for eleven years, you've seen the matches he's had for, for eleven years. I don't know how you think he can do this, but whatever. Um it makes me question some things, right? Uh so I, I it's just a title shot. We're not saying he's gonna win the title. And even if he did, it's like like they haven't made Daniel Bryan to be some unbeatable champion. Like he survived he his lost, last match like, because, uh, because Rowan came out there and, and fucking cheated to help him win. And he did kick AJ Styles to get the title to begin with. He's a heel. Yeah. Um yeah, it's not like fucking uh Randy Orton or or fucking uh Triple H is the champion or something or, like that. It's not it's not like it's Samoa Joe's the champion and they made and they actually booked him up to like the level that he's been at as far as his promos. Or whatever else. It's not like that. Like if if Samoa Joe was his dominant heel champion, I'd be like, yeah, I can see why you'd be like, no, like no, they made Brian utterly beatable. Yep. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Uh. Yeah. Brian versus Kofi Mania. So uh, Kofi Mania greater than Hulkamania, and that tweet <laughs> took the fuck off. Um. I yeah. mean, either way, regardless of whatever happens, I would just believe. Look, all I don't know where they go with this, but like. I just know that, like, I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have a great match because they they had they had a great gauntlet match. Uh, the beginning of that gauntlet match, they had a great end of uh, Elimination Chamber. So between those two and their two PhDs in pro wrestling, I think they'll be I think they'll be fine. They'll right? be fine. Like uh, I think now, we're looking at like four and a quarter at minimum. So <laughs> yeah. Now once we move on from there and go on to WrestleMania, like regardless of whatever happens, like they need to come up with a reason for they need to come up with something for the New Day to have a position on New Day slash Kofi to have a position have a match at WrestleMania that that not necessarily as a headlining match or one of the anchor matches, but like something that matters and they actually get a W as opposed to what's happened to them at WrestleMania 32 when they fucking lose to the League of Nations. Yes. Or, and, they, and, then at the, and after like the old guys come and clear out the league, the, the big bad heels, they uh, Austin fucking embarrasses a lot. Stun, or, uh, stun Xavier, Xavier. Or a stunner. Yeah, right. And make them complete fucking goofs and then not like get fucking squashed by the Bludgeon Brothers like they did last year. Uh, or they're the host of WrestleMania the, the year in between that. Like, yeah. they need actual uh, actual match to culminate the fact that, like, they have been these gigantic merch sellers or to actually, like, to go and to signify and, and, and is actually, like, in, according, in accordance with the level of merch they sold for this fucking company for the last five years, roughly. So that's what it needs to be. All yeah. this other shit, like, or, or four and a half years, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> like, we... They have ele- this thing has elevated the new day and Kofi brand, so it needs to- the brand, the-, the at, so it needs to move up, um, and be treated as such like how they should have been treated years ago. Yeah, and, and if not, I'm gonna have some questions. So, and yeah. I already know what it's gonna be. And it's, yeah, and it's questions that we've always had. Yep, if you've listened to have. this show for uh, any amount of time, <laughs> you know yeah. exactly what the fuck we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so, last couple things I get to. Uh, we've got two different movies. Um, you know, we we kind of bundled the Lacey Evans discussion into the NXT thing. But if you have not heard quickly, supposedly after Ronda's done. Lacey Evans is being positioned as among the big three in WWE yes. with Charlotte and Becky Lynch. Yes. A, a regular. You what? Know, hold on. Hold on. Just a bit. Like, you think of nine, 1997 WWE and you think of a big three, you think of Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, and The Undertaker, right? Yes. <laughs> and then you, and then you can think of, like, okay, so. The early, or the early like the aughts. Holy, like, the, like, the Holy Trinity was once. Uh, John Cena, CM Ronda Punk, thing. Daniel Bryan. Right. So you think of like uh, the Holy Trinity of WWE, like for the women's division anyway, like once they wind down this Ronda thing or whatever. So Ronda wants it down. It won't be WWE, it'll be Ronda that wants it down. And Careful, like, James. Okay. You're talking about Ronda's vagina. Careful. I said when she, I didn't even mention her vagina. I said when she, <laughs> when she wanted it down. Neither did, neither did Melzer. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Like, I mean, look, I don't care if she wants to start a family or not. If she wants to... Uh, we're just led to believe that she wants to that she wants to call it or she wants to be wind it down after WrestleMania at some point or soon thereafter. I don't care if she wants to go home and smoke dope. I don't <laughs> care. That ain't got shit to do with me, right? Um, 
but the, the moving on from there. Um, <laughs> so you think of, you know, as you mentioned, the Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, uh, John Cena, the Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, right? Uh, <laughs> John Cena, Batista, Triple H. Right, yeah, yeah. So now you move forward to this for this first piece for the women, and you go to uh, <laughs> you go to now and for the women, it's like we're finally gonna have ourselves a holy trinity of three people that are over whatever to carry the division, and two of them have absolutely carried the division and carried this company for the last uh, five months of the year, right? And you get like so Becky Lynch comes to the front line, you are absolutely part of the holy trinity, yes. Charlotte Flair, absolutely. Like, we, we look, this is all we've ever wanted from you ever since the first time we ever laid eyes on you, <laughs> right? This was yours. Uh, yeah, uh, for you to be this, and you look, and not only is it something that like that we wanted it for you, you actually went out there and you went and go, you went and got it. Congratulations, right? We're, we're excited for you. Congratulations, Charlie. You're part of Holy Trinity. And then you hear the third person is Lacey Evans. <laughs> You're like, what like the nigga, fuck? what? <laughs> like, oh, Lacey uh, Evans. Am I am I being swerved the, here? The, look, the Lacey joke? Evans. The, the, the yeah. one, the, look, the one that they won't even let wrestle on TV <laughs> that that having dark matches with Natalya on main event. That Lacey Evans, the one that fucks up every move she does at the beginning of the Royal Rumble. <laughs> that one. Yes. <laughs> My God. The Lacey. one, the one that's like the the ninth or tenth best woman in NAC oh, when she was man. there. Her? Are yeah. we sure, James? What's say again? I said, are we sure? <laughs> I mean, look, um, this company, this, this is the thing, right? Oh my God. I, this, uh, this, I always feel when it comes to, uh, or this, how I usually feel when it comes to, uh, places that I believe to be, um, people, if this is merit based, right? Yeah. If this were merit based, um, if we lived in a world where this was merit based, and it well not merit based, but like more merit based, right? Because nothing's a, nothing is a pure meritocracy. Like even sports teams, they have their political agendas and oh yeah, shit see, see, too, right? see, see, clutch sports. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I mean, as far as running a team, even right, like me oh, too. Yeah, like don't like like don't play uh, don't play <laughs> player X because he's better than player Y because player Y has a, as a uh, is younger and cheaper contract, so he's trying to try and get this old dude to fuck up out of here and try to run him right, like. It's kind of yeah, like it's the reason why like they got rid of Drew Brees to uh, to run with Philip Rivers, even though both of them are, turned out to be Hall of Fame quarterbacks. It's like we're going over to do on a rookie contract, you're supposed to be having to pay this dude uh, that you know that money that he's owed for playing underneath you know less than his contract on a rookie deal, right? That's the reason why most holdouts are is like you're not they're not paying to get paid what they're owed. They're trying to get back pay for what they were getting underpaid for the first few few years of their careers or whatever. Anyway, yeah. it's a long long story short, so. If this were more of a merit-based thing, right, as opposed to they were just picking people for that shit, as you as you poetically call it, right? <laughs> you, uh, they uh, they pick it dudes for this and, shit. And they, yeah, they pick folks for this shit. So, um, you can say, you know what, um, Lacey, uh, she has like we talked about her, like she has some, she's she's a good athlete. Um, we think we can do certain things with her, or whatever else, but, um. When there's a Naomi, a Asuka, a Mandy Rose, a Sonya Deville, a Ruby Riot, a uh, you know uh, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Natalia, uh, Mickey James, Alexa Bliss, um, Tony Storm, Rhea Ripley, uh, Jenny, Bianca Mia, Belair, Bianca Belair, Io Shirai, Kyrie Sane, Dakota Kai, like Candice LeRae. Uh, once you have that kind of uh, that kind of tally up against, it's like okay, it's okay. So like you basically have picked somebody for a slot, and then like by hella high water, they're like they're gonna get there, right? And then like and if the fans with it, cool. If they're not, fuck them. Oh well, right? Like I'm not saying the same thing because it's it's, uh, it's totally unfair to the person I'm about to compare it to this, but uh, we do have a new IWGP champion, and um, <laughs> and he's a lot more talented than. than, than Lacey is how, uh, but like you look at that slot for like we need okay Kenny Omega's gone so we need a new top Gaijin and then you're like all right well I yeah, clown that well, Ty Dillinger well, should go to Japan anybody white should be going to Japan right now <laughs> they might just put the IWGB <laughs> title on you <laughs> Jay White privilege right? look, remember 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 when I said on the on the thread I was like look man that man coming to IWG that man can come out there and end up on the, in the G1 that man can, look and be like look MSG show. 
I mean, obviously, you know, you got to I'm not accounting for I'm it's like imagine there's no uh, 90 day uh, yeah. release. Right. I got you. There's no 90 day period. Like, All right. New Japan show. Uh, MSG. J for U.S. title. <laughs> you got you got Ty Dillinger or the perfect 10 or whatever he's going to call himself versus Juice Robinson right there. That There's your U.S. title man right there. Unbelievable. And they ain't like when I said that. They want to kick me out. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just... Anybody white. Any white boy. <laughs> <laughs> we got on to talk about their, their, their whole thing. But, yeah, like, as far as uh, back to the lecture at hand, like, you look at... Uh, to compare the, the Jay White thing is like, all right, you want a new top gaijin? Okay, cool. Like, um... You got Will Ospreay, who's one of the best five wrestlers in the world, bar none, or, or period. And you got uh, you got Saber, who works a style that means he's going to be reliable. He's not going to be hurt. He's not going to be you know he's not going to be hurt that often. You know, the, like he can have a big, he have a great big match, and then can still continue to be make dates in, in all these towns, yeah, whatever else. And he's also a great promo. And then you look at the the Jay White thing, and it's like, and it also he's also a heel, just like Jay White is. But it's like he's so far beyond Jay White that like you literally are telling Jay White to go literally go learn on the job. And it's like, not only is that like not fair to the not not necessarily fair to the fans as far as they want to see the best product and your best foot forward. It's also unfair to the talent because you're heaping expectations on them that you are not sure that they can live up to and you're telling them to sink or swim when there ain't no need for trying to sink or swim. Y'all got plenty of talent to, to utilize to where that person can grow into that position to be ready for it, to be someone that's, you know, that person is now qualified and reached that point in this time and, and is ready as opposed to like, we got these people that are like, can they do it? I don't know. We're going we, we gonna to see. Throw their ass into the water. Or even though, like, like, they fit the characteristics. Swim, like, it's like Vince has like a casting for this role, right? He's like, yeah. I want a six-foot-tall blonde woman. Like, and, and she happened to be the one that walked through the door. No, but the best that. thing is like, no, no. It's not I want a six-foot-tall blonde woman. It's I want another six-foot-tall blonde woman. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Because it's like, you have Charlotte right fucking there. She's about to main event WrestleMania. Like, but you need another one? Yeah. Another you need another one looks exactly like her. Okay, they got and, types, and they even picked the best t- uh, six foot tall blonde when they have it uh, off key. That's not that's not Charlotte. It's Rhea Ripley who's, who's the NXT Women's Champion or NXT UK Women's Champion, and she's who, who's cons- light years beyond Lacey Evans, and I believe and she's younger, considerably younger, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Which means you have look, no not against Lacey, but. There's only a, you only have a window to, as an athlete to do this, whatever else, and it's not real. It is not legitimate sports. Therefore, you can have uh, you know Minoru Suzuki's in the world, even though he was a great athlete and legitimate uh, street fighter. But like you have people that could wrestle into their fifties and whatever else, and you got even the guys that uh even like the the guys in triple <laughs> at tri- in triple A and CMLL, like the older guys that are like in their sixties on Sundays having terrible matches, right? Oh, on Fridays and Sundays, it's still, but like. There's a window. She has more time in the window. She's already ahead of her. Like, what are the odds that, like, f- three years from now, like, Lacey Evans will actually be, like, as, like, what are the odds that three years from now we're not going to be like, what the fuck were they doing with Lacey Evans instead of Rhea Ripley at that time? Yeah. Right. It's like, we, and it's like, we don't have the, we, we're not clairvoyant. We don't have, like, foresight and know where things are going. Like, we're seeing this shit happening. So how come y'all don't, how come y'all don't see the same shit we're seeing? Um, and I, and by y'all, well, like, they, you know, they I mean, are seeing something, James. And, no, no, and by and by, we're I mean like literally anyone that's ever seen those two wrestle. They they are seeing something, James. They're seeing like their developmental. They're seeing the the image that they that they want to put out there. They're seeing. They're just seeing like something with her. I don't know what you see in Lacey Evans that you don't see in Bianca Belair personally. But oh, oh yeah, that's another one. It's like and they're yeah, relatively I, the same age. I was just com- I was just comparing the I was just comparing the packages like because we were comparing packages like if you want to get into if you want to get into the real reason why it's, why it's her instead of Bianca Belair we can because it's quite fucking obvious but <laughs> but like I was just comparing like okay you, this you want a toy that looks like this so I'm right. going to compare the best thing you the best thing you have uh, in the store that looks like that exactly. and it's real. And Riz, you know, but if you want to do the Bianca Belair, we, if you let me look, know, we can go into look, it. Look, we, you know. we can do it. Because, like, like if, okay. you, if you look at, like, Lacey Evans, right? I, I just looked it up. She was born in 1990, right? 
Um, she's 28 years old. Uh, I want to say Bianca Belair may be 29 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Right? So they've been in developmental at the same amount of time. Yep. They debuted in the main of May Young Classic. Yep. Same, the first one, same year. Yep. They, Bianca Belair has actually gotten over to an extent in NXT. Yep. I'll, not even to an extent. She's gotten over. And she was over before she even had the match at TakeOver Phoenix, but now she's even more over. So, but, so yeah, look. Um, oh, like she, if you go back and watch the, the match that she had with uh, Deanna Perrazzo at Brooklyn for the pre-show, she's over there. Right. Yeah. Bianca Belair is exactly the same age as me, James. She was born on the same day as me the same year. So she's going to be 30 uh, coming up in April. So okay. why are we wasting time there? I mean, who knows? <laughs> who so, knows? Whatever they reason for, I mean, other than the fact that, like, well, she actually got over NXT, so let's give her a run, or she's going to have a run. And granted, like, look, she's still far, far, far more advanced and, like, um, or far beyond, like, uh, I'm not say far more, but she's still well beyond, you know, like the Mandys and Stonias who are competent, who are competent, or even like someone, or, or but, Compared to Lacey, it's like, this ain't even a competition. Like, I don't know how you watch either, both of those people wrestle at the bag and come to the conclusion and like, yeah, they're in the same league. No, not at all. Like, Bianca's always been better than her. Yep. And then uh, you talk about, like, the, the athleticism. We, we want to talk about athleticism. We want to talk about somebody like, Lacey Evans has a unique look. Oh, you can't tell me Bianca Belair doesn't have a unique look. Yeah, about unique, I mean, literally the word unique is supposed to some euphemism for, you know, you know, oh, a taller blonde white woman, like, <laughs> she, she, like she's, like she's, like you know, as opposed to like the fortieth uh, blonde woman, like we have, she's, she's, she's a, she's the tallest one, she's the second tallest one, um, as opposed to like, you know, that picture that they took at, at Evolution, like really like lays it out for you, right? Where it's like it's um it's it's Alicia Fox, it's uh it's Naomi, it's Sasha, Sasha Banks. It's um, it's Bianca and it's, it's one Ember. other woman, Ember. And Ember, right? Like that that picture stood out. Like this, like these are the black women you have, and then like you throw in like you know, um, you throw in someone who I did. You throw in like uh, Lacey Lane, who's not on TV right now, but is like in who's has a she's on the Largo TV. Loop. Yeah, Lar- Largo Looper or um, me M or someone like or that. Me, or yeah, or me and M, right? And it's like. Who's Fina? You know, I ain't gonna get into the phenotype. I ain't gonna t- touch it. I'm just leave that word. Like, yeah, she, whatever. Look it up. You know, whatever. Like, look, me, me and him is black, but I'm not going on. I'm not getting into that right now. But you got, you got that, and like that's that, that about it, right? Yeah. I mean, Bianca's it. You want to talk about unique? Who the fuck looks like that? Who the fuck talks like that? Right. Like and then you talk about the athleticism thing. Like she's like she is legitimately the best athlete in WWE. Like she's called the EST for a reason. Like this shit ain't a gimmick. Like, like, <laughs> like you know, this is real life. But I don't think people. <laughs> this is real life, James. Like I think people understand like how ridiculously um, exceptional um, NBA players are. For example, like as far as like no man, like think of like the best shooter you ever met in your life. And you're if you're just a normal normal human being walking around and has ever played basketball, think of like the best basketball shooter you ever seen. Think of the best ball handler you ever seen. Think of the best the best athlete you ever seen, generally speaking. Um, and then like add all that up, <laughs> add all that up, and that's what and, and that's what all 450 NBA players are, except they're like fucking six seven or taller, right? Right. And they're right. all like six three, six anywhere between like six feet to seven feet, right? <clears throat> so they're all these they're doing this while also being fucking gigantic. That's how special they are as athlete. Like to be an all to be an all ACC track uh in, in track and field, like you are a freak. Like and, and at Tennessee, which is also like a, a a track program that is um that has a kind of a national um that has national recognition amongst track, like she like yeah like 
you if you hold like, like, if you talk about a big three, this it, 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 just what they've given us, like like what what did, what they see in Lacey Evans, they talking about a background or whatever. They right. they want to talk about you know the athleticism, the uniqueness, right. the fact that you know this, they're not saying this, but we know what it is that she comes from the performance center. Right. So it's like all right, compare all that to Bianca Belair, and it's like. Bianca Belair also came through the PC, was found, and look, was found by Mark Henry, or was discovered, quote unquote, discovered by Mark Henry, right? Yeah. Um, and, and decided to try it out. Um, the, the backstory of being all they see, and all the hell, just the backstory of her family and the story that she told, um, that she that she gave in the promo, the her was building her up, um, NXT talking about like how her dad was like the first, how or sorry, her her granddad was like the first black electrician uh, electrician in North Carolina or something like that, yeah. Like, that's a great story. Like she comes from, she, she comes from this great family. Uh, she was a great athlete. Uh, you know, she kind of lost, she kind of lost her way after, after that. And then like, now she's doing this and like, this is new, her new passion. Like it's a great story. Like this is when we talked about how, like, how bad these stories are for the women, how these aren't, these aren't people. These are characters. Yeah. <clears throat> and like, that's another one of these things where like, they did all that NXT. Like the grounds were done. You can retell that in, 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 um, in, in the main roster. And you can honestly look, they talk about all this story that and, uh, and the story of uh, Lacey Evans and look, they ain't I've, talk about none of that shit right exactly, now, James. They ain't talked about none of it. They haven't done anything to get over. It. And also, like, they also got to play in heel, which is like okay. So well, that's gonna be a great way to get over, like you know, a marine. Like, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> like that doesn't sound like th- like this is. Like they're picking somebody for this shit. They're they're saying they want to use her as a crossover star, and we know what crosses over in this country. Uh, no, 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 no. We know what crossover means for them. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and and it's and it's awfully Aryan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like you look at where like it's amazing that um what they still consider mainstream, but it's like but it makes all sense in the world because. Look who's behind, look who's running the company. Like exactly. I mean, people always talk about, like you know, they're always X amount of years behind what the mainstream is, whatever in WWE. And you see it is like okay, so NXT. No, not look. NXT is great. It's the best thing WWE uh, has ever done for for a long extended stretch of time ever. But listen to their soundtracks, listen to their music. Right? Yep. I I, n- I never feel like I'm like a part of that. Like ever. Like that's why I, I can watch something like MLW and be like, I love the presentation. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and, and all this stuff is just like you know stuff around it. It's not the actual you know the, the, that is the stuff that's around there. That is the sizzle around the steak, right? Right. Um, but that's just the aesthetic choices. It is like, all right, like you come out here and you play this metal, this heavy metal. And I'm wrong. Like Triple H has great taste in, in metal, right? I've said this to you before. Like, yeah. Look, man. Like this is a person that clearly like grew up on Metallica, and like that is clearly like. Uh, what has informed his, his, what 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 goes to his mind for what he wants for his his um his metal music sound like like that's absolutely like uh Lars theme music the War, War Raiders uh, theme music yeah. that's absolutely shit that I would have heard like when I was go- when I was going and work lifting weights and workout sessions during football season right mm-hmm. when I got when I have an SC, a white SNC with a ball head and a goatee absolutely <laughs> right so that's absolutely it but um you look at you know, this is supposed to be was new, or this is supposed to be more um, with uh, what what is going on in actual like you know the pop culture sphere, or whatever else. Like, there has never been a there has never been like you know a heavy a heavy rap influence or whatever else or flat flat out. There's never been a heavy black influence on the product. And I mean, you look at the layout of the, the roster composition demographically, and you're like, I, I get that to some extent, but. Look at the viewership. Look at the um, look at the consumer base. Like like, and you look at what is selling musically. Um, that too is like, all right. Go look. Ever since it got, ever since like you know, pirating has gone down because of the rise of streaming. Look, look, <laughs> look at what's number one. Look at the no. Look at the hot one hundred. Like. Over before it used to be where it's like you know it it, it was it looked real lily out there and yeah. now look at the top 100 and it's like all you see is drake and Kenny lamar and 21 savage and whoever else or whatever else um and it's Cardi like B, it, Nicki, it, Nicki minaj whoever else and the thing about and, that james it's like it's not black folks that's putting those people there exactly 
exactly. That's my point. Like the streaming is people that like that is the streaming is telling you that everybody listening to this shit. This ain't just you know when they used to throw in their body said, oh that's just what they listen to, and then there's this perverse, um, or maybe there maybe this was the case, or not maybe this, this was the case twenty. 30 years ago, as far as like the NWA and the virus, the virus in nature of, oh my God, like these neighborhoods are that I never go to are super dangerous and listen to these stories. And they're oh my shooting God, and like, killing each other it, on every block. <laughs> right, 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 right. As opposed to now where it's like, look, man, all of that talk and stuff like that's all that, like that still happens, but oh yeah, there's actually is a legitimate like love of that art form. And, or and also these musicians and also that music uh, that's from, that comes from this culture, and it's to the point to where like it has now been the number one genre of the youth and of pop culture for over twenty years. So, you know, maybe, and then you look at like where rock music has, you know, since the, since like the new metal wave of like you know Limp Bizkit, Corn. Uh, Lincoln Park, like ever since that run, they've never had any sustained run of that. That's what it is. It's like it, 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 like it's like okay, I know what's going on, and I know what's I know what's happening, but like y'all are smart in this. Like y'all should know what the what the heartbeat of or not the heartbeat. Y'all should know what like uh, what's moving the culture. What we always talk about what's moving the culture. Yeah, and I don't mean like. And I, I don't even mean the culture anymore. It's like the, the whole entire music industry is all on this right now. And it's been on that for almost half a decade now at this point, ever since streaming <laughs> came, kicked in. And y'all still are out here with this metal? Okay. All right. And then you wonder, and then you wonder, like, I mean, you start thinking this stuff, and all this stuff ties in. It's sort of like, look, they have slots, in a, and it seems like a quota for X number of whatever else, uh, of, you know, of, 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 a certain type of people, but they only want to, and this also ties into Kofi Mania, why people, I think, like, people only, like, feel that kind of way about, like, why is he, you know, why are people, this makes no sense, so why Kofi would ever, you know, win the title. That like, makes perfect sense. Like, like if this was any, if there was sense, any other 11-year veteran that has been around yeah. selling all this merch, we have a direct comparison for them in The Shield, right? We have three right. motherfuckers that all... Now, we, oh, wait, wait, not even the direct comparison, but, like, it's so direct of a comparison that they decided to do the match to open up Survivor Street 2017. Correct. And it was like, these are the two dominant forces of this era. Like, you can bring your wife, family shit up the tree, and I'm going to throw it right back at you and exactly. say it ain't on none of these guys' levels. So, it's only the the way you want to see it. Like, <laughs> like, and if you if you put your yourself in, you know, the shoes of someone like James and me, well... Well, we're looking like, okay, this person is, has this resume, has been around this long. Where the fuck is his opportunity? Right? Yeah. And, and it's then like. Also tie it back, right? And also tie it back. Like, you look at what they're, what this thing looks like for Lacey Evans, and then you talk about a unique story, athlete, or unique story, athlete, mother. Uh, and, you know, the, the look or whatever else. And it's like, this person um, right now has all of that. And then some. So, what are we talking? What are we really talking about here? Yeah. And and the thing is, frustrating is like these are conversations that only like um, that people are going to have. These conversations are going to be happening outside WWE, but it's never going to be a conversation that happens inside of WWE amongst the people that are actually like booking the shows and whatever else. Like maybe there are people that are about to pound on the table for Bianca and pound on the table for Kofi and pound on the table for whoever else right sasha banks another notable another person is a person that's been ugh. but but like it never for some reason like the people that bang on these tables or whatever else they, all they doing is banging and they never ever get heard apparently yeah. and that's part of the thing is like all right like why can't someone like andrade like why is andrade he's there to basically have great matches and he does have great matches but it's like Shouldn't these great matches eventually mean something? And then they do the Ray thing, and it's like, okay, this is, this, this is like, where is that? But then ultimately, like, he comes out next fucking week, and he he has another great match. He does a job for a new guy. Yeah, um, yeah, man, it's it, it's just it's strange with this whole Lacey Evans and you know being her literally having a doppelganger essentially yeah. uh, over in NAC just hanging out. No, another one, right? So uh, we talked about this, and this also ties into uh, Tuesday show. Um, 
when Charlotte, or sorry, when Becky broke her nose or got her nose broken by, by Nia, and she did the whole story about like, I'm out of time, so I have to pick my opponent for Ronda. And she faces goes face to face with everybody. There's Sonya and Man in that ring. There's uh, Naomi in that ring. There's Carmella in that ring. There's Charlotte in that ring. Uh, there's the Iconics in the ring, which is laughable. Um, and they go by everybody. Charlotte, who, you know, Charlotte is a cream of the crop. Like, I don't know who wouldn't want to see those two have a singles match. And they did, and it was great. But move on, move on besides point. She goes face to face to everybody. I mean, more or less like a, it's almost like being like a dial for the fan to like do the, do the, uh, it's, it's like a rap what, battle. What, like, what, like, what is it how you used to call it? No, the survey says. Survey right? says, yeah. He was out here surveying people going face to face with each other. Every time she stopped on somebody, that means like it's time for you to give your reaction, almost like we judge in response. And then they got to Oscar, and Oscar, who they had, you know, they buried six feet under with the whole that whole spring after she uh, lost her undefeated streak with the dumb shit with Ellsworth and Carmella. Um, and there were, people were still behind her. That was the last ever anyone was by by a country mile, like maybe probably twice as loud as they were around Charlotte. And they end up picking Charlotte. I don't blame them. But like for somebody to uh, to have that kind of response, even though they've gotten to be that much more over than their push, and then she wins the title, and then she taps out the, and then you give her something by making her tap out the, the hottest act in the company, and then you take her off the TV for three weeks, and then she bring her back, and she fucking and she fucking does a, a dumbass baby face <laughs> job to to Manny Rose. It's like with, with, with the excuse of it being you, you ain't you with, ain't learn shit with the excuse of it being oh they need to set up a program y'all wouldn't do this shit to Ronda y'all wouldn't make her yeah. lose a damn non title match like an idiot right and it's also like you want to talk about the we need to set up a program okay. Have her go beat the rest of the comp- the rest of the field of challengers. Right, in. exactly. It ain't that hard. I don't know why this doesn't ever enter in um, folks' brains, um, but yeah, there there's so much more to get to with um, the Bianca and uh, Lacey Evans thing. I'm sure we can do that another week. Oh, too. we can do this forever. Like, I mean, um, look at the new day for example. Just like, just look at the new day. Just look at them. Look at the look at the new day in the Usos feud. They had the best feud in all 2017, and then they run it, and, and, then and they, no one talks about it. Like it wasn't like, like it, I don't think I feel like you know we had to like amplify like our voices like and, and with a fucking megaphone like Jimmy Hart to shout from the mountaintops <laughs> like this is some of the best work you people will ever see you have no idea how this is making like folks feel like and, it's lament- <laughs> and, and, and they did and it ultimately they they didn't like you know try to use that to help build a uh, a division or nah, divisions they, and they, they, didn't they use that to try to get them to where like they can't separate each other so they can like given how hot and how much people were into what they did over that over that sm- over that uh uh summer that they can move turn it into all right we got to move usos to raw um it helps them because it can tighten some of the um some of the uh, roman thing and kind of get roman you know try to help roman out at certain points it also helps with storytelling because Honestly, one of the best things they ever done with Roman was, uh, you know, the, the 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 club and AJ versus the Usos and and Roman. They didn't even do that. They just said, "All right, y'all had, you know, the greatest tag team feud probably this company's ever had. All right, we're go- just going to let you just stay there um, around each other, and then like, is and then we're going to play hot potato with the belt when like it's your turn, it's your turn, and then we're going to have you plus the bar basically be the only three people that ever like, you know." to have fused with each other for the whole rest of the year because the Bludge Brothers got or the last six months. And that's where it is as opposed to like, we need to split this up and then bring, come back to it later because, and use the fact that they have did all this good work to try to elevate their brands. Like they did, like they're doing this stuff on raw, the raw, the raw tag divisions. And it's never going to get over because ultimately at the end of the day is still the revival who they killed for almost two years. Yep. And Gable and Rude, who just like they have as many great matches as they want, and they're going to eventually get the crowd. But like, they have yet to do anything to make it an actual angle to where they're actually like there's something to care about and feel or whatever. Yeah. Like, or as opposed to and the, Uso, the Usos on the New Day on that brand would have helped that because people care about these two teams because of the great work they did last year. All that, that great, all that great work was rewarded by them getting stomped the fuck out uh, at yeah. WrestleMania 34 in five minutes. Yeah. So yeah. keep that in mind. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah we, we went a little long. I guess we'll save the whole deal with the Page movie um, 
uh, in the Hogan movie for another week, or maybe we'll throw that on the Patreon uh, as a, like an overrun. We're a little bit deep, but thank you guys for um, listening to the show this week. Uh, lots of stuff to take away from this. I think this, I, I would really be interested to see what people think about this, you know, Lacey Evans thing and why not Bianca? And honestly, I didn't expect this to go this deep, but like it, like, because I, I like, like I was really thinking obvious. about it. I've been I've been thinking about it for like ever since she came up. I'm like, so we picked Lacey Evans for this shit, right? But there's yeah. literally somebody else there with the same comparable resume that that beats her in every. Um, yeah. And you know, it's not even necessarily a thing about necessarily about like I, I could, we did the Ripley we did the, the Ripley thing we did the the Bianca thing, but like there are a few other women that they could they could have made you could have made the same you can come to that same conclusion with too. Yeah. Right. Like so, yeah. It's good luck with that. God bless them. Yeah. So, uh, if y'all take it as a as a knock on Lacey Evans, I mean, you can take it, but whatever. Like, <laughs> like, um, but yeah, man. Uh, check out the rest of the shows uh, here on the Social Suplex Podcast Network, as well as our show over on Lords of Paint Radio. Uh, keeping it strong style with Jeremy and Josh. All things elite. The Omega Loop Wrestling Podcast. Grown men watch this shit. Uh, in the Ricky and Clive Wrestling Show and uh, March 1st coming soon NXT then now and forever with James and rotating guests so uh, anything before that's, we get up out of here James yeah yeah, that's not going to be the name of it it's going to be called NXT then now forever there won't be no with James Boyd or none of that shit it's going to be NXT then now forever that's it so don't, that's don't it. do that don't do that to me don't do that to me we're like you know, you know James Boyd is on the front of the show don't like Yes, but no. Like I'm not doing it. I'm not trying to carry it in that way. Like I'm trying to have, sit there and have discussions with, you know, some of my wrestling friends or whatever that I've met over the years, and kind of have discussions back and back while going over some of these shows. That's all I'm trying to do. You trying to make it like, you know, this is Solo James. It's absolutely you know, this not is, Solo James. This, this is it. Y'all, y'all been wanting to get rid of me. You know, <laughs> all, 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 all y'all that want to get rid of me. He's, you know, uh, this, here's your chance. So, uh, but nah, that's gonna that's gonna wrap the show up. Uh, I love fucking with James, giving him some shit. But uh, yeah, so check out everyone else on the network and visit our Patreon. Throw us a buck. So, uh, <laughs> we up out of here. Buy a, buy a One Nation radio, radio shirt. Them shirts are hard. Anyway, we up out of here. Later. Peace. Thank you for listening to One Nation Radio. We'll see you next time. <laughs>